perfect, right in the corner of the mouth, perfect. <laughs> Talk to the rest of me. It's okay. Yeah, good, good job. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I may need to. Are these tires? <laughs> what a nice hook set. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. You got them hooked pretty good. There, there we go. you go. Very nice. He's shaking it off. Stupid bird. <laughs> Not what I was trying to catch. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. I don't think this one's a bird. <laughs> it's so fun. It's a giant flounder. <laughs> Is that a mackerel? I just saw a flash, that's all I saw. No, that's a big kit sail cat. <laughs> Woo! Alright, time for catch and cook. Todd. Okay. One thing I've uh, learned in the years that I've been fishing is that you can't always believe what people tell you. People told me that jacks were disgusting, that they tasted awful, and then I cooked one and I was pleasantly surprised. Most people look at catfish, saltwater cats, as being uh, equally disgusting, if not worse. But uh, a friend of mine recently caught a hardhead catfish and ate it, and he said it was great. And I saw the fillets, they were little, but um, it was a beautiful white meat, and again, he said it was great. And I've heard sail cats are better, so I'm gonna find out. Okay, Bubba, don't let the sting me. I think one reason people really don't like to mess with these fish is because right in there, there's a barbed fin, and it's enormous. Look at how big that is. That's uh, the reason they're called sail cats. They've got them on their peck fins too, so you need to be extra special careful. Well, it's that and the slime. That is really gross. You're gonna sleep now. Okay, that fish has been on ice now for a little while so that he can expire. And I was going to film him on my flay station here with uh, the knife that I just uh, got a new knife and had to upgrade my sheath. That's another story. You can see the lighting here is really not that good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fillet him over there. So let's get him out of the ice. There's a bunch of videos out there online uh, about how to flay these guys. They have a rib cage that comes way down here. So it's really not that hard. Once you know that, you just 
slice that there and follow the rib cage. Try not to catch yourself on their spines. So they say, it seems to be true. You get a beautiful fillet, nice and easy. That's a good size fillet. The meat is not white, but it's certainly not dark like a Jack Revell. It's nice and soft, no bones. We'll do the other side. Just to follow that rib cage. Wow, I can feel it under the knife. You really gotta go pretty far back. Almost half the fish doesn't get flayed. <laughs> Interesting. Let's go. I should have left that fillet on before I completely took it off because now the angle of the fish is weird. But, you know, you get it. If you've ever filleted a fish, uh, you'll be able to fillet this one just fine. There it is. One fish, two nice fillets. That's about almost good enough for two people. Oh man, I butchered that thing though. I left a little bit of meat on the uh, on the back side there. This side was pretty good, but either way, you go back to feed the little gribbles of the sea. Oh, look at all the other catfish are on it. <laughs> a little too big for them, I guess. Okay. Back to flaying. Quite simple, just like any other fish. Pull the end, slide the knife as you pull the fillet. The knife is pretty much staying put. Yep, 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 yep. You know how to do this. That's the skin. Hey, it did a good job. Seems like it has a little bit of a dark vein there. I've uh, found in Jack, sometimes you can kind of cut that vein out. Let's try it. I haven't seen anybody do this, but I've done it myself with Jacks. A lot of times you can get that dark meat out of there and it'll make the rest of it taste pretty good. Sometimes it just pulls right out. If you can grab it, it separates from the rest. See that? Yeah. I bet that filet is going to taste a little better without that there. I'll do this with sheep's head, uh, even redfish, anything that has a dark vein. Even chickens, I'm not really a dark meat kind of guy. All right, that's good. I guarantee that this tastes better than that. That is beautiful. I can just run my finger up and down it and see that there's no bones left. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to be frying these, so before I fry them, I'll just cut them into little nuggets. And there you go. That's ready to be breaded and fried. Okay, here we are. I got my fish pieces all trimmed up very nicely. I made sure I got all the little nastiness off of it to give it its best shot. I got some egg here that I thinned out with a little beer. An Old Bay mixed with some forcey breadcrumbs and some oil that is heating up in a shallow pan here. Some people have said to me that I should uh, try broiling this and see how it tastes then because they were scoffing at uh, eating sail cat. Uh, but, you know, the way you prep something might be the difference between it tasting really good or not so good. So I'm going to give this its best chance of tasting good by frying it. How are we doing here? Oh yeah, that's ready. A couple minutes on both sides. And uh, we'll try it out. Thank you. 
Whew, hot. <laughs> First thing I'm going to tell you is it's really hot. <laughs> Makes it difficult to tell whether it's any good. Mm. The lemon is perfect and fresh, which helps. But the first thing I'm noticing, um, the consistency of the meat, good God, that's hot. It's, uh, it's very soft. Mm. Borderline mushy. Mm. Again, if I let it cool down a little bit, maybe it'll firm up a little. <laughs> Just a side note, I let this cool off a little bit and that definitely firmed up. So the texture is not too bad. A little bit of a fishy flavor, but mm, I'll take it. You know, I think honestly, if, if I didn't know this was sail cat, I'd probably like it even more. That's definitely edible. It is firming up a little bit as it cools off. I could see dipping that in a little bit of tartar sauce or something and it would be actually kind of nice. A little more seasoning, I think. That would help too. Really, it's not terrible. It's not great. It's not flounder, it's not snapper, it's not sheep's head, uh, grouper by any means, really. But we do live in an age when you can't have trout or redfish or snook you know those are the three major fish that people like to catch cook and eat here in Tampa so if uh, if I had to have a fish dinner I'd say that was pretty good well I'll say it suffices it's really not bad at all I'm gonna finish it after it cools off a little bit <laughs> so I guess um, Another lesson is uh, if you hear something, don't always believe it. Sometimes you've got to try it for yourself. I wonder what that seagull tastes like, man. <laughs>